Well, husbands were in the Dublin Fury today, somewhere in France, somewhere else. And you'd be sent down to cash the ring paper for them. That's what they called the pension books, ring papers, because they were rings printed in where the post office used to stamp in the stamp the signal where they had been paid. I am working down to Mr. Butler, somebody's assistant, asked him for a lender of a shilling. I'd say, well, I stamp the ring paper. We'll get the ring paper back off you at the end of the week or something like that. But when the soldiers come back from France and this, that, and the other, very particular women start to use the pubs. And the snuggers, of course, they were never allowed into the public bar until it reached the stage when publicans had to, had to cater for women. There was no powder realms in the pub, I didn't tell you. As a matter of fact, the gents' realms were anything but nice, and most of them. But then the ladies started coming around greater numbers, of course, and they had to cater for them. The result was they had to alter the completely the style of pub, the style of service, they had to even alter the drink they sold because the ladies, of course, had to have the most expensive drinks they could, not care unless where you got the money from to buy it. Charlie, what will you have? I'll have a vodka. And someone who never heard of a vodka before, I'll have a vodka too, please. Or I'll have this, I'll have a damn beauty. Or a claim them more. Or I'll have anything that, something that they find it hard to pronounce, they think is great. To be better than half of a bottle of stealth. So <clears throat> this went on until a terrible change of everything came over the pubs altogether. The old publican died out. The personal business between the publican and himself and the customer disappeared completely. Now in Dublin and White, when I was a young fella, if anyone had joy, you had to have beer at the wake. Even before they got down to Fannigan's to make an engine for the funeral, you had to have beer for the wake. So what did they do? They dashed down to the local publican, told them their sad story, got their beer on the slate, got a few quid off and they started the insurance money, and pop went the wheel down, and it was and down on. But, as I say, that type of man has almost gone. We're no use going to a busy manager and tell him, well, we got Maggie Joy last week, is there any chance of a few dozen on the slate, and I'll see it. That's all done away with. That's all I wash out now. The first large bar I was ever in in my life was in Balbury Street. And it was looked upon as being real posh upstairs and downstairs also. Instead of the old fashioned mahogany and this, that, and the other, and the old fashioned mirrors with the name of the advertising of products, they had um, introduced a new form of lightly, lighter coloured wood, and the G car was brightened up. Modern lamps were put in, all kinds of different shades and makes, and etched mirrors on the wall depicting wine glasses, bottles, or half naked women, or what have you, were on them. And this was, the, as far as I can recollect, that was the very first lounge in Dublin. I said to myself, this is such an expensive looking place, aren't they? Together, this, they're going to rub us into a safe with a drink, I'm sure. Some of them have to pay for all these decorations. And true enough, there was a small charge extra on the drink. The idea was to keep the riff raff out, they said, so that nice, cheese people come in and enjoy themselves in comfort. And keep the scrubbers out, charged as much as you can. But the word got around, you had to go down to so I still won't mention the poor name, I'd smash them. When I felt so old, I wouldn't get down there. All them flashy bits of stuff going in there. She they'd cost you a fortune. She dared look around there, you wouldn't have a juice coming over. So it was largely avoided by the ordinary man, I must say. But these this started in a new kind of male addict called the lounge lizard. Of course, regarding at the time of the pubs, there was no, no singing orders, it was almost everywhere. And then a pub in Richmond Street started with the song, the one of the upper car starters, it spread into Jean Street, 
and gradually spread almost everywhere. Mostly unorganised at first, but then when an organ organised the proper MC, piano and what have you. The fellas could go in there, talk about the football, talk about the racing, tell their odd blue yard, course and society, please. Or have them say an excuse me, man, minute. Probably there's someone who could do it better than yourself. But one time you go into a pub and say, well, give us a point of plan. You wouldn't even have to say a point of plan because there was very little stout. It was all porter. And have a good swig out and spit on the floor if you like. No one to bother you. There's plenty of stardust there to, to mop her up. Now, if you even make noise, thinking, oh, the lady suddenly I'm like a fellow making noise, eating his soup for his dinner. I like to take a good swing and take about a half a point at a time. Lower it down. But of course, you're told me what I wouldn't do in front of these these uh, ladies and all. It must be genteel and nice and take a time and sip it. Sip it and that's your point. You only need two drinks, only two sips anyway. 70% of them was ever attached to them, and then of course, we're at fault for bringing them in. And how they got such a footing in the pubs, I don't know. You're telling your pal something. And the next thing you realise he's not listening to you at all. And you're probably going to look, what are you looking at? A room full of minis. Oh, I think it's a terrible distraction. It should be made well on course or something on pubs. But well, I think it's disgusting, as a matter of fact. It's all right in his own place, of course. But in a pub. And maybe a wee bit copy looking at these ones as well and get you to see it's trouble. That's another danger. But it's obvious that some of them are of tender years and shouldn't be allowed inside of the premises. Now, when we're inside with three. As far as entertainment is concerned, I used to love to go to a pub and get a game of rings in there, play a game of rings. And when you'd have your first few points, you'd be deadly on the board. And then after you start getting drunk and drunk with the wings, they'd end up going out to the window, out to the door. Then they brought in this, these dads. The fellas come over from England. Oh, Lordy, darts, kind of metallic. We must have darts in the pub. She was a double chip. A lot of nonsense. And then they always put these dads on the way out of the gents. That you were judging for your dads. You nearly want dads and money to go outside. Then, of course, they had another monstrosity called bar billiards. The table was a whole lot of holes. You could hit the ball anywhere at all, but it doubled up the, the, the game to put six months in. Another great source of income. The game only lasted, it's twined it. Eleven minutes is all the game lasted. You had to put in another tenner. But taking it all in all, I suppose, the spoiler me criticisms, and in spite of all the things that can be said for and against, I must reluctantly come to the conclusion that I'd sooner have that mother than Paul Claudia Galway, because secretly I'd love to see the lady there.